Yes, but we do actually have one now that I think is really, really important. So um, we saw over the last week, for the last few days, a new ruling from World Swimming that anyone that had transgendered to be a woman from male could no longer partake in female races. And I welcome that, but somebody I know who has campaigned for this and has been a really important advocate for it is Sharon Davis. And I'm delighted to say that she joins us now. Welcome, Sharon. Good morning, Manny. You owe me a big time. I'm just going out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, you can so hear me, much. Can't you? <laughs> oh, imagine how uh, we feel. We've been here since five. I but, know, I know. Um, credit to you. Absolutely. I've had laryngitis. I don't normally sound quite this bad, even on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I'm sure people will be enjoying it, Sharon. Sharon, I was fascinated to read this story. And, you know, you've campaigned hard and long for this. Are you pleased with this ruling? Yes, I mean, swimming was one of actually the, the first governing bodies about a year ago to say they were going to ring fence the female category. And what they've done very recently and what you're talking about is that they had a consultation for a year on what an open category would be. And an open category now means that that would include anyone that's basically transgender, you know, that's a male that's a, that's identifying as female. So it, it does carry on and protect that female category. And World Athletics has done that. World Cycling has just recently done that. Um, but World Triathlon, would you believe, has not done that. So the three sports that are in triathlon are, are not, although British triathlon have done it. So this is the mess that we're in. There's just no uniform policy across all sport. And where I'm kind of very passionate now to try and push it forward is things like school sports days. Mm. Um, I've had numerous parents on the phone to me saying that their you know, 11-year-old daughter has now been involved in only... Um, mixed sex races at primary school not a single little girl has come away winning a race on sports mm. day and things like park run you know which is supposedly non-competitive yet they have course records okay yeah. so if they're not competitive get rid of the course records that's fine but if they've got course records then you need to be fair and you need to say that females deserve their opportunity to hold course records and women are using, losing their course records every single weekend yeah. at the moment because they allow people to identify however they want Do so you know it's about protecting young girls and females across all sports across all levels not just at elite it really is and also Sharon I feel quite strongly that it isn't just puberty that is the um, the, the point here when boys and girls change so my three-year-old yeah. last year had her first sports day and in the car the day before I said to her, are you going to win and first of all she told me no because winning wasn't important so I put her right there Sharon and then she said but I still won't win and I said why and she said because the boys are racing with us and she already mm. identified age three that the boys win the races when they're that young so these changes start in utero when these boys are you know bathed in testosterone and girls estrogen and I was a little bit worried about the international cycling rules about bringing down if people have gone through puberty, um, testosterone yeah. has to be suppressed below 2.5. There isn't a woman walking around with a natural mm. testosterone of 2.5. So this worries me still, Sharon, that there are these arbitrary cut-off points about testosterone yeah. and whether or not they're going and, and they're puberty. all rubbish. You know, the whole testosterone argument is, is utterly ridiculous. Um, you know, males and females are very, very different. We are different, as you said, from the moment we're conceived, basically. Mm. And we've got lots and lots of records that show that eight-year-old boys are outperforming girls, you know, quite strongly, particularly in things for upper body. So like throwing things, you know, they're always much stronger. Uh, and that goes all the way through life. And the more explosive the event, the, the bigger the difference. So at Olympic level, it's anything between 10 and 30%. You know, like I said, if, if you know, if we send that message to young girls at primary school, they're just not worthy of their own competition. They're not worthy of being allowed to win. Mm -hmm message are we giving so there are ways and means that we can do this whether it's creating extra categories whether it's working with the biology that we've actually got you know to me i just find it extremely difficult to say we're going to ignore biological reality and that a feeling that can change mm -hmm. the following day gets to trump you know what is something which we as young girls cannot change or slightly older girls in my case we, we just <laughs> change our biology you know it is what we've got and it's there for a very important reason it's not worse it's just different and so we have to understand it and i think i worry terribly about what we tell young kids about the ability to change sex because not a single human being in this world can change mm -hmm. as you all know as a doctor can change mm -hmm. their biological mm -hmm. sex it's in every mm -hmm. cell in your body mm -hmm. so you can take drugs for the rest of your life 
which will affect certain things, but it will also have very bad detrimental side effects as well. Which so we're not being very honest with our kids at the moment. We're sort of giving them fairy tales, you know. And and it that's is an unattainable dream, isn't it? It's an unattainable it dream. And yeah. I worry. I mean, I worried when my son was at school, which was many decades ago, where you know there was no longer a finish line because winning wasn't important. And my daughter comes home and says winning isn't important, you know. And I said to her, you know what fun is the most important thing, and you know what the funnest thing is winning. winning. And so the more you win, the more fun you have. And I think yeah, it, you know, participation is really important. You know, I would go is. along with that. And I've, I've been a, such a strong advocate for sport. I would never, ever not wish everyone to be involved in sport. And there must be a place for everybody in sport. However, life is pretty competitive. Exactly. And you're going through your first job interview is quite tough. And if you've not learned those lessons in life that when you get knocked down that you need to get back up again, again, we're not doing our kids a, a favour, I don't think. So Sharon, tell me, when we approach the Olympics, which we do next year, obviously, in Paris, will there be any transgender athletes in women's sport? Oh, really good question, because obviously the Olympics are a year away from Paris. It, will, it seems like it's come quickly. That's it because has. obviously Tokyo was three years mm -hmm. away, you know, because of COVID. Um, in the big sports, there won't be. So as I mentioned, a track and field, cycling, swimming, rugby, boxing, those are all sports that have said categorically, no, we're going to ring fence the female category. In the UK, volleyball, triathlon have also come on board as well. Um, we're hoping that world rowing will will actually change their policy very soon. British rowing has recently changed their policy, but it's 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 little by little, you know. So what we really need is that the IOC takes the right stance, mm. and the IOC have been the worst offenders. The reason we're in this mess is because the IOC made very bad decisions in 2015, and they always do. They always make the very cowardly decisions throughout history, and that's one of the reasons I did the book. Um, and you've had a copy of the book, and the book was to show that women's sport, you know, has has been a battleground forever and ever. We've always had everything stacked against us. Mm. For example, you know, 1% of the US um, advertising dollar in sport goes to women, just 1%. 4% of airtime goes to women. In the UK, 1,000 women earn their career from sport, 11,000 men, more than 10 times as many. So we already have this very tiny piece of the cake, even though we're watching, you know, the fantastic women footballers at the moment. Absolutely. You look at what salaries they get and what exposure they usually get. It's tiny in comparison. So the opportunities that males get in sport compared to the opportunities that females get are already colossally much larger. And now as females, we're expected to move over for media mediocre males who can't make it in the male category <laughs> and it's just outrageous really you, you couldn't make this stuff up and put it down on paper you couldn't make it up and I just wonder if people that actually just say oh you know be kind it's the nice thing to do um, actually haven't read anything or thought anything about it I did have as a patient actually a few weeks ago somebody who was involved in um, BMX cross which is quite a, a feisty sport and yeah. when what they do is quite interesting when they don't have enough female competitors to actually you know they They've only got three competitors in a race they let the trans women actually race with them but they count their time separately and i thought that was an interesting approach yeah, there's lots of ways we can do this you know as long as we're just being honest about the records although i do think part of the sign of winning is the first person over the line know, yeah and if you take that away from that girl even though she might have it on a piece of paper mm -hmm. That says that she is mm. first. She didn't actually get to be first. That went over the line and to enjoy that moment. So I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm I'm for that. I still think we should race. You know where and what we mm. should be doing is encouraging more girls to do the sport. Hundred percent. Right? You know rather because we lose so many young girls at. 12, 13, 14, 15, they drop away from sport. And here's the irony. The government spends a fortune on let this girl play and, you know, policies to try to encourage young girls to do sport. And then on the other side, we have this, which is obviously excluding young girls. And what we find is that girls ex exclude themselves because they don't want to compete against boys. Or, or parents turn up with... Yeah, parents turn up with their, you know, their daughters to play a game of rugby and there's males on the opposition and they go, there's no way I'm letting my daughter no, go in there because she's going to end up with a broken neck. Mm -hmm. And so they exclude themselves. So this policy is not inclusive. This policy is exclusive of young girls in their own category of sport. And we talk about feelings again, but what about the feelings of the girls? You know, documentaries are done all the time about the feelings of this transgender athlete. But no one ever does a documentary about yeah. the young girl's feeling who's just told she's not worthy. And it, it's, it, it's throughout history. This is just the same thing as, it, as there always is. Do you think we've reached the peak and we're coming down the other side, Sharon? 
oh gosh, I hope so. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, in one way, I'm, I'm fed up of talking about this because I just want fairness for females, and I'm so outspoken because this happened to my generation with the East Germans. Yeah. And again, you know, you know that because we're, you know, slightly, slightly older people <laughs> will remember the history of the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s with the East Germans, where they were fed terrible, horrible steroids, and they had this massive advantage, and they dominated for years and years. And so I had friends that lost out on medals, even though they were the best in the world because people were cheating and I didn't want another generation to lose yeah. out so that's why I've spoken out and, and I would love my normal life to come back <laughs> you have been fantastic and thank you for coming on at this unearthly hour I really do appreciate it and I do owe you one